A seemingly normal day on the Johnson family farm took a dramatic turn when a massive sinkhole suddenly appeared in their backfield. The family, shocked and concerned about the potential dangers, immediately notified the authorities. When the police arrived to assess the situation, they peered into the depths of the sinkhole, expecting to find nothing more than earth and rock. However, what they discovered at the bottom made their faces turn pale, a sight far beyond the ordinary hazards of a natural sinkhole. Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. There they are. I'll open the door, Erica said to her husband when she saw the officers approaching their house. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, you have to come with us, the officer said harshly. He grabbed Erica by the arm and dragged her to the police car, and another officer grabbed Mark. It all happened so fast and the couple had no choice but to do as they were told. What the hell was going on? When they finally arrived at the station, that same unsympathetic officer led them into one of the interrogation rooms. Will they be okay? What if, what if the hole becomes even bigger? They had both undergone an intense interrogation about the sinkhole, and to their surprise, the police seemed to be suspecting them of causing it. They had answered all the questions truthfully, and the police decided to send them home, but they would still keep an eye on them until they found who was really responsible. Both Erica and Mark had asked the officer interrogating them, what is it that you found at the bottom of the sinkhole? But neither of them had received a proper answer. It was obvious that the police had found something huge down there, but they were not willing to share what it was, and they sent the Johnsons home with clear instructions. In the following days, the Johnsons barely left the house. Their property was swarming with police and an investigation team, and people were running around constantly. It was their property after all. Didn't they deserve to know? That evening, Mark and Erica sat together, enveloped in the day's heavy, oppressive mood. Why won't they tell us anything? Erica asked, her voice tinged with frustration. Mark, equally frustrated yet deeply concerned, replied, We have to stay strong for us and the kids. They held hands, a united front in their uncertainty and the looming mystery of the sinkhole that had so abruptly disrupted their once tranquil, predictable life. The quiet morning was shattered by the arrival of news vans and reporters at the Johnson farm. Cameras and microphones seemed to sprout from the ground, turning their once secluded home into the center of unwanted attention. Mark watched through the window, his expression a mix of disbelief and concern as Erica stood beside him, a frown creasing her forehead at the sight of their private life becoming public spectacle. The Johnsons felt like animals in a zoo with reporters and cameras peering into their lives. Every move they made seemed to be captured, analyzed, and broadcast. Despite persistent knocking and calls from the media, Erica and Mark stood firm in their resolve not to speak. Following the police's instructions, they declined all interviews. The next day, Mark's curiosity led him to research man-made sinkholes. He scoured the internet, finding instances where human activities had led to similar occurrences. Each article he read seemed to both support and contradict the geologist's theory, leaving him in a state of conflicted skepticism. Later, the geologist called again, his tone more subdued. He confessed that while his theory had some basis, he lacked concrete evidence. That night, Mark and Erica lay in bed wide awake. The day's revelations spun in their heads, intertwining with their own fears and frustrations. The possibility of a man-made sinkhole added a new layer of complexity to their predicament. The morning sun revealed a startling scene at the Johnson farm. As the day progressed, the police set up barricades in an attempt to control the growing crowd. While surveying the chaotic scene outside, Mark overheard a fragment of a conversation that made him pause. Two unfamiliar figures stood near the edge of the sinkhole, speaking in hushed tones. It's not just a natural occurrence, one of them said, glancing around furtively. The statement, vague yet suggestive, sparked a flicker of curiosity in Mark. He strained to hear more, but their voices were lost in the din of the crowd. Mark recounted the overheard conversation to Erica. Their kitchen became a place of speculation and theory. Could they know something about the sinkhole? Erica pondered, her brow furrowed in thought. The couple considered the possibility that the sinkhole's origins were not as straightforward as they had been led to believe. As the sun set, Mark and Erica sat in their living room, the weight of public suspicion and speculation pressing down on them. 
The stillness of the night was shattered when Mark and Erica were jolted awake by the sound of someone trying to break into their house. Adrenaline surging, Mark quickly moved towards the noise while Erica dialed 911. The shadowy figure outside fumbled at the window, unaware that he had been discovered. With a mix of fear and resolve, Mark managed to restrain the intruder until the police arrived. The sound of sirens soon filled the night air as the police arrived. Officers quickly took the intruder into custody, much to Mark and Erica's relief. The couple watched as the intruder was led away in handcuffs, a barrage of questions flooding their minds. The police assured them they would investigate the matter thoroughly. After the police left, Mark and Erica sat in their living room, the silence around them feeling heavier than before. The next day brought a significant development. The police confirmed that Mark and Erica were not involved in the creation of the sinkhole. An officer arrived at their home to deliver the news, lifting a huge burden off their shoulders. The couple exchanged glances of relief and gratitude. Further investigation revealed the startling truth behind the sinkhole. The police informed Mark and Erica that illegal mining tunnels had caused the collapse. The revelation was shocking, and it brought a new perspective on the entire ordeal. The couple listened intently as the officer explained how the extensive underground tunneling had destabilized the land, leading to the formation of the sinkhole. The intruder, now in custody, was linked to a group of illegal miners. These miners had been tunneling underground in search of valuable stones or minerals, believing that the area beneath the Johnson's land held a significant deposit. The media's narrative changed dramatically with the discovery of the illegal mining operation. Reporters who had once hounded the Johnsons for scandalous angles now focused on the intrigue of the mining story. The local police chief visited the Johnsons to extend a formal apology for the distress caused by the investigation. He acknowledged that the situation had been handled with less sensitivity than it deserved and promised to pursue the illegal miners vigorously. In the quiet of their home, Mark and Erica reflected on the ordeal and how it had brought them closer together. The story concluded with the Johnsons making a decision to turn their ordeal into a catalyst for change. They became advocates for stronger community bonds and more stringent oversight of land use. Their experience with the sinkhole and the illegal mining operation underscored the need for awareness and vigilance in land management. Determined to prevent others from facing similar challenges, they worked towards fostering a more informed and united community.